good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the BMF Northwest uh, webinar. Uh, this is from part of our webinars that we host uh, month to month. Uh, we are hosting these webinars to discuss the various uh, subjects that are of uh, interest to a BMF membership. And then today we are looking, we are taking a different direction from a transformation, looking into the issues of uh, SMME development. And from the SMME development, we are going to have a discussion by joined by our guest today, uh, and then who I will introduce later uh, after uh, this part. Uh, and then the second speaker will then be uh, Mr. Dingi Maseleka, who will then uh, also an entrepreneurship lecture, who will then uh, also share his presentation during the session. Yes, uh, as we start off the, the session, I would just like to read the, uh, the background and then the purpose as to why we are hosting this webinar today. And then also even thanks to you that you are, you have joined us uh, for, 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 you have joined us for this webinar. Uh, the purpose of this webinar is to, as part of a, a personal uh, development to, uh, uh, as mandated by Black Management Forum, we are looking into empowering our members as far as their professional life is concerned, but also looking into entrepreneurship because we believe that our members should not only focus on the managerial leadership, but also need to encourage entrepreneurship in our, uh, we must also focus inter on entrepreneurship as another way of uh, uh, advancing the transformation agenda as it is the mandate of our organization, which is Black Management Forum. So the, the, the BMF was under the leadership of Meba uh, Dilezi and the PEC have put together this program and they have uh, requested me that to facilitate and then they will be joining the session at a later towards the end of the program where they will be engaging uh, us on the uh, will be of forming part of this discussion. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, before I introduce the, 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 the first speaker, uh, May I, I indicate that I am Wahisin Joni Bujang, also a member from Bujanala, BMF Bujanala in the Northwest Province. Uh, let's go on to give our first speaker, Memusito, who will then take us through her journey. Uh, Memusito, she has a very long uh, and well documented uh, uh, professional profile, but uh, due to the time constraint, I uh, will then focus. I'll uh, just summarize the, 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 the hair program, hair, hair, hair profile rather. And then May Mustito, she's the executive director uh, at uh, AME uh, uh, and also the entrepreneur by, by profession and uh, the founder of a uh, Dizoho mining and engineering uh, uh, company. And also she's a founder of a uh, demo SMME coach an organization that focuses on and giving a, a advisory service and coaching services to the young uh, and upcoming entrepreneurs in the Northwest province. Uh, uh, and then she has uh, in the past accumulated uh, accolades and then also BMF for general have honored her as the woman of the year, business woman of the year in back in 2014. Yes, so with that brief introduction, we'll down the give a uh, to lead us into this conversation and then had this woman in the mining sector uh, Jenny and as well as uh, the, 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 and looking also into the theme of today also uh, taking us uh, how how has a uh, mentorship uh, and, and, and business coaching have uh, assisted her to growing her business uh, Mem to welcome and over to you thank you uh, good evening, uh, and thank you for inviting me to be one of the speakers today. My name is Tebo Homosito, and yeah, as you've already introduced me, the session today focuses on mentorship and coaching and the importance of especially women in business. Uh, just a brief background. Um, I come from a rural village called Mayile, Roikral. And I was always surrounded by, you know, the mining companies. And I, I always wanted to, to start my, my business in the mining sector. 
but the challenge that I found as a woman was that there's in our villages lack of access to information, you know, lack of mentorship programs or support structures that can help a lot of women to, to venture into this mining industry. So for me, it was a very difficult journey. I started uh, my own business in mining in 2012. And if I had not received the mentorship and coaching from various agencies, I wouldn't have survived up until today. Hence, I really value the importance of mentorship and coaching for any entrepreneur if you want to be sustainable and if you want to grow within any sector, you really need to have a mentorship, you know, support program. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, ma'am, Sita. Okay. My company at the moment, uh, I'm wearing two caps. I'm a director at Africa Maintenance Equipment, which is also a company that is very male dominated. We specialize in distributing power transmission tools, gear boxes, and you know, hydraulics. Uh, this is a very you know, male dominated sector. Previously, I started with steel fabrication where we manufacture underground material cars. And for me, I always see few women in, you know, in the space. That is why I decided to, you know, share my knowledge and skills and just to let other women know the opportunities that are available, which are, they are very lucrative. They are high capital intensive. I think that is why many women are not tapping into those industries. But I believe as an entrepreneur, if you, you know, look for a mentor, somebody who can help you throughout the journey, you can really understand the industry. And there is a lot of, you know, opportunities out there whereby women are given, you know, training and development. So I, I really, today, I would like to encourage entrepreneurs to, you know, tackle, you know, the challenges that we are facing and, you know, just provide solutions to the problems that we are having. And having a mentor, again, I, I would like to, you know, reiterate that if you do not have a mentor, then it will become difficult, you know, to grow as an entrepreneur because uh, a mentor will help you and guide you on how to, you know, to go through different stages of your business. We are failing as entrepreneurs because we want to run things on our own. We think that we know everything, but it's really important that we have that role model, that support structure, somebody who's been in the industry before you so that you can really develop your skills and understand how to even, you know, grow beyond uh, being an entrepreneur in South Africa only and only focusing on BRICS countries and the SADC. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, colleagues, we will have a Q&A session uh, after uh, both speakers have rendered their presentation. Uh, if you have a question, please note it down and uh, we'll have a, a enough time to engage our, our guest uh, towards the end of the session. And now let's me, let me introduce uh, our second speaker who will then focus on the topic uh, that is centered around uh, entrepreneurship coaching uh, from an education, entrepreneurship education perspective. Uh, uh, our second speaker, Mr. Jingi Musaleke, uh, he's the, the board advisory member of the uh, Demo Foundation and also an entrepreneurship lecturer by profession for the institution of uh, Johann, uh, University of Johannesburg, UJ. Uh, Mr. Dingi, his presentation will be mainly focusing on uh, uh, giving us a, 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 a lecturing or an academic perspective into the uh, into our theme, uh, looking into a various and how can people uh, how can we use a, a business 
coaching and also looking into how can a young people or uh, uh, the people who wishes to venture into entrepreneurship, how can they also look into various uh, business opportunities that are existing within their communities. Uh, thank you, Mr. Dinge and over to you. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, um, thank you, Wahisin. Uh, uh, thank you, Mayor Musito. Um, and um, just want to also uh, welcome everybody. Um, my perspective is strictly also on um, you know entrepreneurship. Talk a little bit about entrepreneurship, and I'm also going to focus on the model for business growth. Um, for something that I'm, I'm also did while I was doing my my PhD. I'm currently waiting for for my results. So we, um, this perspective um, is just to, to touch on a um, little bit of entrepreneurship, on the theory of entrepreneurship, and also where coaching and mentorship plays a role, why it's very important. All right, so I'm just going to start sharing my screen um, just now. Just confirm if you can see anything. Um, let me just do that. I hope you can see my screen now. Let me share my screen. That door is in, can you see? Yes, sir. All right. All right, so basically, yeah, that's my role. Um, I'm also involved with Timo, for, uh, Timo um, as part of the non-executive uh, director to advise them as an NPO. And our role also is to, to see where, where we can assist as an NPO to, to, to make a difference in our local economies. Um, and as, 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 as SMEs, is something that actually is very important also in, in developing your, your communities and developing your, 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 your economies and in ultimately South Africa in general and the world. All right, so our topic is about business growth. I'm gonna focus on that. That was Deborah has touched on coaching. Um, so I'm just gonna to touch a little bit on um, growing your business. So basically, I um, just wanted to, 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 to talk about entrepreneurship. All right, so, so basically somebody who looks looking for opportunities. I mean, most of us, we see opportunities everywhere we go, uh, but it takes a special enterprising individual to actually put it together, normally using what we refer to as factors of production to ensure that uh, he gets some sort of system working to ensure that they can offer value to customers, whether it's to, to satisfy needs or wants for those customers. So mainly entrepreneurship is about creating innovation, creating new systems, adapting new systems, um, also, most of us, when we talk about entrepreneurship, we focus on resources, all right, which is something that I'm also challenging today, and the processes to produce new goods and services to serve new markets. And remember, in markets, it's always about satisfying customers and also your, your customers' needs and wants. So this is also a continuation of um, what uh, we did as Timo Coaching. We did also a masterclass a few months ago. Um, some of the people who attended will see some of the slides are almost similar. Uh, because uh, the, the theme is, is generally the same, because as Timo, we want to cover the entire value chain. So it's about pursuing opportunities, all right, even if you don't have uh, much funds, all right, which is what I believe is a true entrepreneur, somebody who starts with nothing. Um, because some, some, most of the time, some of us would think uh, we are entrepreneurs, but basically we are people who are managing resources, basically making us managers. All right, so it's about opportunity, risk, innovative, and most important, resilience. So this is my to to a topic for today. All right, it's called the theory of entrepreneurship, which covers the entire value chain of an entrepreneur, all right? From what starting a business or having an intention to start a business is called entrepreneurial intention, all right? Um, opportunity recognition, how to deal with that opportunity and the development, very important of what you call entrepreneurial competencies, which allow you to actually have business success. All right, so this comes from, these guys, Misfa and Zachary, they have the, what they could refer to as entrepreneurial village uh, creation model. Right, so the, the theory breaks it into two stages. The right stage one is where value creation takes place. And as the entrepreneur develops, um, uh, takes chances or put together documentation or they do business plans and everything until they start their own businesses, that's basically your stage one. And stage one also involves failing, starting your business again from scratch. And as you're doing those things, you develop things that we refer to as entrepreneurial competencies, which allow you, all right, which are necessary for you to actually move to stage two, which, where, which is where what we refer to as an appropriation stage, all right, where you actually get the rewards. I mean, some of you might have, you know, have stories of people who have made it in the past, those are the people who actually 
you might find out today is a millionaire, but if you look at their history, they actually have failed. They have 10 businesses, um, failed uh, 10 failed businesses behind their back. I mean, you go to America, there's a lot of research that's been done there. You find out most actually billionaires and millionaires, they failed. All right. And in their failure, they actually develop these entrepreneurial competencies, which is very important for you to be able to move to this stage what we refer to as your entrepreneurial rewards. All right. So this is the model basically. Right, so if entrepreneurial opportunity, that's where you actually see an opportunity and then you decide whether you want to do have an intention because intention is very important, especially when you start want to start a business. That's why we refer to it as entrepreneurial int intention because intention then actually determines your behavior. Your behavior then will determine what you do with any opportunities that you see in the marketplace. Right, um, you can talk about entrepreneurship. Most people say I'm interested in to become an entrepreneur, but I always ask the simple question. What have you done in the past week to make sure that, uh, to, to confirm that you are really committed to this thing of being entrepreneurship? Have you sat down and do a business plan or even a business canvas as a start? All right, have you sat down to think of ideas that you're gonna, you might think actually of going out there and offering to the market? Have you identified opportunities in your market or where you're in the society that you're staying in that you can take advantage of? So that's what, the, that's the first stage. And then of course, this is where you actually you put everything to make sure that uh, you can see if it's, is it real? Is it, is, it, is it possible for you to actually pursue this opportunity? All right, and as you pursue this opportunity, of course, you can, you're gonna fail. All right, which is where in this mentorship and coaching comes in, all right, because you at these different stages on your in, in your in your entrepreneurial journey, you need different types of coaches to deal with different stages that you are at, at, at as far as this theory is concerned. So under entrepreneurial opportunities, that's where you'll actually go to workshops such as you know ideation to, to put your, your business, your idea into a concrete a business plan or business canvas. All right, stages where you actually find funding stages where you put your business plan together. And then of course, and then you take it into the market. And of course you're gonna fail, all right? And remember entrepreneurship is never about failure. It's about learning from failure. We don't take it personal. Unfortunately in schools like at UJ, uh, we, we do also teach students that uh, you, you, so you work on your own. And then uh, when test comes, you are the only one who's gonna be writing that specific test. And then of course that mentality sometimes also comes into this thing we call life. So in, in, in academia, if you fail, some people take it personally. But of course, entrepreneurs realize the importance of developing these entrepreneurial competencies, because now as you develop them, there's high probability then you're gonna to move to the second stage that we refer to as your entrepreneurial reward. Right, so basically stage one, all right, that's where the intention starts, all right, where you have an intention to start a business. And like I said, again, intention drives the entrepreneur to adjust to, adjust to the business environment, changing business environment, but most important to take advantage of the opportunity because opportunities are there. Right. No matter how you can look at it, everywhere you look, there's open, always opportunity. But again, like I said, you take a special person to say, you know what, let me do something about this opportunity. Let me sit down. Let me see if I can make it into a business, basically a business being a process. All right. And of course, you're going to be doing this all in the business environment. You can't really do it on your own. But when you're sitting on your own, of course, that's where you're going to be thinking about how to approach this opportunity. And of course, you're going to also mitigate risk that you might find in the market by actually doing things like business plan and business canvases so that you can actually see if this idea in your mind or in your own little world it makes sense before you take it out there. So it's part of the process. All right, so the entrepreneurial intention, which is intrinsic, normally they say it's intrinsic because it comes from within, right? It's not, you're not born with it, but you can actually develop it. All right, so it initiate the first stage. You can go in online, you can go and reach read academic papers where you learn about entrepreneurial intention, right? And most people actually, that's where they get stuck, right? And they have, I have a lot of, I know a lot of people who always have business plans. You talk, you talk to them, they have 10, 15 business plans, but they have not implemented even one of them, which is what makes an entrepreneur entrepreneur because ultimately you need to make it a reality, put it out in the, in the market. And of course, um, uh, part of developing your, your entrepreneurial competencies is how you handle failure. Because I'm in your mind, you might think this is something that's going to be working out there. But of course, when you check into the market, you might actually have a different uh, 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 reaction to what you might have had in your mind. And then, of course, you can make changes as far as that is concerned. All right. So that's where the individual uh, uh, decision to, to be an entrepreneur and to pursue an opportunity. All right. And pursuing an opportunity also comes with what we refer to as risk. 
right? Because when you, uh, an innovation, you have to also think about innovation. Because when you think about it, I mean, uh, the first person to come up with the term entrepreneurship, Shimpita in 1934, the first thing that he talked about when defining entrepreneur is innovation. You have to be innovative, come with something that's new. Because most people, they say they're running businesses, but in my view, it's they're basically are managers because they're waiting for resources, uh, have a business plan, ask a bank, I go and buy a stock, and now I'm running my business. All right, so basically, I'm not true in my view, not a true entrepreneur. You're basically managing resources. All right, so that's the first stage where value creation is actually created. So in essence, the theory proposes that in an entrepreneur, who intends to start a business in the first stage, discovers an opportunity and then finds and reconfigures resources to take advantage of the opportunity. So resources, yeah, it's not only physical resources, but also includes being resourceful, which is actually what this, this theory is all about, right? So um, why entrepreneurial competencies? Because the entrepreneurial competencies are going to uh, determine how you handle opportunities. All right, so if in the past you had an opportunity, you gain experience from that opportunity, there's high probability when another opportunity comes, you'll actually have developed what we refer to as entrepreneurial competences for you to be able to handle the challenges that come with that opportunity. All right, so um, the competencies include uh, what we normally refer to as characteristics of being an entrepreneur uh, due to time, time constraints, I'm going to um, talk about it. So entrepreneurial competencies. They embed the entrepreneurial resources and, and the reconfigured opportunity. That's basically what uh, your resources are. So your entrepreneurial competencies are. All right, so your reconfigured resources, remember again, resources can be physical resources or non-tangible or, or, uh, non resources. And that happens what we refer to as an effectuation mechanism. All right, where the phase, through the effectuation mechanism, you develop what you refer to as your entrepreneurial competencies. All right, so what the importance of effectuation, what basically what it means, um, it means that the person creates from what they have. I want that to sink in, rather than from deciding what they need and then creating. That's what effectuation is saying. All right, that means you don't say, you know what, I need resources. If I don't have resources, that means I cannot start. So you say, what is it that I have? Then you start from there. It describes how an entrepreneur approaches the opportunity at hand. Like I said, again, traditional entrepreneurs, they will always use what we refer to as a causal, causal approach to fix the target, saying that I now want to start a business, I'm making one million. Um, and then of course, um, from your current situation, you might not even have the basics to be able to do that. But what can you do with what you have? That's what fluctuation is saying. Saying it means that entrepreneur will start by considering the resources that are available to them. And resources, again, remember, it can be intellectual. What is it that you have? I mean, you can be able to say, I'm in South Africa, I speak English, I can write. That means I can compile a document and ask for help. That's how simple it is. All right. So, of course, effectuation means that an entrepreneur will start by considering the resources available and then deciding how they might be put together to create a business. Right, based on the entrepreneurial competences that you developed. Those are the things that happened as you were running other businesses, as you failed, and so forth. And you'll see, like I said again, normally what happens is people are successful today is because of the failures of the past. All right, so it's very important as, a, as, as an entrepreneur, especially as far as effectuation is concerned, for you to also remember that failure is part of the process. All right. There's even some some in, in Johannesburg. Um, I'm also thinking here, and Timo, we might have to start that where people will come and tell us about their failure stories. All right, because normally in society we always celebrate people who have made it, but failure is sometimes in most of the cases for those people we see the end of the story. We don't know their story or how they got to where they were. And when you actually research that and go into that, you'll find out they have a lot of failures in the, in the journey. I mean, you can talk of. Uh, Mr. Mr. Maponya and uh, Dr. Maponya, may his soul rest in peace. All right, if you listen to his story, we also at UJ, we're doing a case study with him, about him. So it's, it's, you'll see that in any story that you actually read about an entrepreneur, they fail and fail and fail. And during, due to those failures, it made them who they are. Those are what we refer to as your entrepreneurial competences. All right, so in fluctuation, all right, if you're interested, there's a, a lady, I'm just, uh, um, the next slide is about that, uh, develops entrepreneurial competencies that is necessary to reach the next, the next stage that we refer to as your entrepreneurial reward. So Sarasvati, sorry, Sarasvati, right? So you can go online. Um, there's also a video where she explained this whole process. And uh, I think it's um, one of these channels of Big Think, uh, the, the, the people who make the difference in the world. Uh, you can go and watch the, and if you want more details about that. 
All right, so this is just the, the five approaches that uh, the, 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 she's talking about when he talks about effectuation. All right, the first one is bad in hand. That means you create something new with existing means. That's how simple it is. Rather than choosing waste to a chosen goal to say that um, I want to make a business for 10 million or 20 billion, whereas where I am, I don't really have the resources, even the market to be able to do that. All right, so the second one is affordability loss principle, all right? So it's saying instead of making business plans, I think sales projection, some of you might have experience with that and trying to raise investment that um, the expected returns appears to justify. That may, the principle indicates that your commitment to the venue should, limit, should, to, should be limited to no more than you can afford to lose on it. Right, so that's basically what uh, when you're looking at what is it that I'm willing. For example, if I'm married, are you willing to put your 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 for example, you married and come into your property? Are you willing to put even your asset at risk when you're actually doing this? So something that you also need to, to consider when you're using the effectuation principle. All right, there's a crazy quilt uh, a principle. Right, uh, it means involving building connections, putting together commitment from stakeholders, and determining the goals based on who comes on board, which is what we're also doing at at Timo. I mean, uh, um, we basically saying you know we're using what we have. We're creating networks, we're talking to BMF so that we, they know what we actually are doing as, as Timo, all right, and doing these things. So even if we're not getting anything, because our commitment is to just to teach, it's about education, it's about making a difference in society. And immediately when you want to do that, without or if you start with the firstly thinking about what is it that I'm going to get, already you are um, on the wrong, on the, on the wrong um, path. Right, I think most of us, we know about this, also eliminate principles. If life gives you lemons, make a lemonade. And of course, pilot in a plain principle, we are basically saying that um, the human agency is a driver, a primary driver for opportunity. So you'll actually go into the opportunity like a pilot, you'll actually adjust as the going gets going. So as you can see, this is just some of the suggestions that you can approach this issue of dealing with an opportunity. So it doesn't mean anyone is wrong, right? That is why it's very important for you to develop these competencies so that you can be able to see maybe one of these one, which one might actually work with you, all right? So then of course, after developing your competencies, then you are now gonna get to stage two, what we refer to as your appropriation stage, all right? So it gives, um, uh, stage one just gives an uh, entrepreneur a temporary advantage to move to the second stage. Why am I saying that? Because remember, even if you, you, you have an opportunity, you have a business plan, you take it out there to whether it's venture capitalist or to the bank. The first thing that they normally ask from you is your, your CV, just to get a, a sense of your experience, right? If I've failed, if I've, I've done businesses in the past, even if I'm applying for franchises, I'm quite sure that, um, of course, if they see that you already have been in retail for a long time, there's a high probability that you're gonna be a success because you can be able to handle the challenges that come with the environment, because you also have the previous experience of being able to do that. That previous experience, again, is what we refer to as your entrepreneurial competencies. All right, so the stage two is where you actually get your, you are truly rewarded, whether you're dealing with a for-profit organization or you're dealing with a non-profit organization. In order for, 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 for you to actually, after developing your, your entrepreneurial competencies, you also have to, be, to build what we refer to as dynamic capabilities to be able to grow, taking us now into this thing that we're discussing today with this business growth. Because business growth, again, most people expect it with their first venture. But of course, there's research is showing us that that's, you need to develop uh, these competencies until you, you can get to a point where you can now say, you know what, I can, I can take this opportunity in a different way. That's why we're talking about this thing of dynamic capabilities, all right? Um, they embed it uh, to sustain value and create a reward for an entrepreneur. So growth and value are sustained by creating or acquiring what you refer to as your dynamic capabilities. You cannot acquire dynamic capabilities if you haven't developed the necessary entrepreneurial competencies. All right, so to acquire uh, dynamic capabilities or approach to potential investors which require these capabilities, entrepreneurial competencies must be well development. So that's the connection between those two. So I just want to touch, I'm just I'm quite concerned about the time, all right? So basically what are dynamic capabilities, right? 
Um, just want to develop it. Uh, they, they evolved from what, um, is, what is called the dynamic capability theory, developed from the traditional view of resource-based theory, all right? The way it's saying that to start a business, you need resources, and they actually talk about the different type of resources. All right, so the main focus at, with the resource-based view was that businesses need to manage and utilize resources, like I said at the beginning, being a manager for an organization to be competitive in the marketplace. But of course, resources in this day and age are not get something that gives you a competitive advantage. You don't have to look far. I mean, the richest people in the world, they're not dealing with commodities per se. They're dealing with information, they're dealing with data, they're dealing with things that are non-tangible. Um, um, non all right, so that means now the resource, the definition of resources also has changed a little bit. All right, so the dynamic, dynamic capabilities represent the organization tries to respond and the ability to collect, generate, and reconfigure their competencies to be competitive in the ever-changing business environment. So dynamic capabilities is saying that resources, they make it slow, but with dynamic capability, if the company or business develops them, there's a probability that they can survive in this um, a dynamic environment like we see now with COVID-19 and so forth. So it's also called a dynamic response, right? It's a management ability to reconfigure firm resources and routine in a manner envisions or deemed appropriate. All right, so I just wanna skip a little bit here. Uh, something is just a repetition of what I said, but basically uh, SMEs operating in a dynamic environment need to, to acquire dynamic capabilities to enable them to, pro to survive and prosper, right? So Lossi supports this view and further proposes three distinct comp uh, uh, components of dynamic capability being absorptive capacity, adaptive capacity and innovative capacity. In my study, I just focus on the two, but of course you must remember that innovation is what makes small businesses in this day and age, all right? So an absorptive capacity is basically an ability to get knowledge, but use that knowledge to gain a competitive advantage. Same as saying that you go to a new university, you gain the, the tools and ways of doing certain things, but then you cannot really apply them to make a difference in the world. Absorptive capacity is a component of, is called a component of dynamic capabilities and allows entrepreneurial SMEs to tackle the business environment via knowledge manipulation. As you know, knowledge is the new gold in this day and age. Management application of acquired knowledge to gain a competitive advantage. I mean, companies that are advancing in this day and age, you know they have knowledge centers. I mean, I've worked in banking, I'm working for FMB retail, FMB uh, commercial uh, banking, as well as net bank business banking. They all have what we refer to as your uh, knowledge centers. Even the, the customer relationship management ensures that even if you leave, they don't need, they, you, you don't take away the wealth of knowledge that you actually have gained. If, for example, as a relationship manager visiting your clients, because they know the value of that information. Right. So when an SME gains a competitive advantage, just a definition, it can perform well and have an upper hand in the marketplace. So the next one is adaptive capacity, the ability to adapt. It's very important. It refers to an organization's ability to find a balance between exploring opportunities and aligning its internal strategic capabilities to efficiently exploit them. So you cannot say, I'm a business, I promise to deliver 100 t-shirts. But then when you go into your business, your capability, your capacities only be able to produce 20 t-shirts. All right, so adaptive capacity also talks about that. And it also talks about the, the concept called vacillation, ability for a business to actually adjust itself to be able to go um, where there's opportunities. Because normally, if you, you have resources and you invest yourself in a resource, and things are changing, it's hard for you to, to actually adjust and think about uh, the car industry. I mean, uh, uh, Mr. Ma uh, Elon Musk is changing the industry. Um, you find that the electric, electric cars are coming. Just imagine what's happening to that infrastructure that all the other businesses have actually um, invested in. All right, so it is basically something that has to do with that. And of course, innovation is innovation, continuously improving the capabilities and resources of the business. So those are the three, um, um, dynamic capabilities that an SMEs can look at if they actually want to, to grow or make sure that they're there, all of them. All right, so um, these are just the value drivers of, of uh, dynamic capabilities. I'm not gonna touch on them 
because I'm out of time, all right? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna share the slides with everybody who's interested, all right? But basically these authors who came up with the theory of entrepreneurship, Ms. Ryan Zachary posit uh, um, that if a four dimensions are present in a business model design, there's likelihood of business success and growth, which is what we are talking about today. All right, so value drivers, that's what we talked about that, are dependent on the entrepreneur, having developed sufficient entrepreneurial competencies to handle the challenges of that stage, all right? All right, so this is a stage of the theory at which true value is created, all right? So the, basically the theory proposes that the competencies must be developed to need to source the essential dynamic capabilities just to make sure that stage two can be a success. So this is something also just as an addition for, for I guess, discuss it last time. Um, what I'm discussing as, as some, some businesses, there's entrepreneurial businesses and there's small businesses, all right? Um, if for growth, you always have to view yourself as an entrepreneurial businesses. The small businesses are those businesses that you find as we're growing up. They'll always be like that shop at the corner. It never grows. It'll always be the same size. But of course, all of us have different um, ambitions. Or right? some people just want to a small business for themselves to support their family. But of course, if you want growth, you have to think like an entrepreneur, right? And be able to adjust yourself. All right. Uh, so, so some of the characteristics of entrepreneurs I'm going to discuss. Um, and of course, I just want to like the last slide I did with with uh, with Kemo. This is some of the the things, uh, the opportunities that we find, especially in this day and age, because now everything is not going to be on, on, on a brick and mortar type of environment. You need to think outside of that if you really want to pursue growth in the coming few years. You know, fourth industrial revolution is here. We're talking about artificial intelligence. We're talking about augmented reality and all those things. Um, but yeah, if you want to position yourself for growth, you need to make sure that you take advantage of what is coming, all right, what, not what is, as we're speaking at this point in time. All right, so basically that's my story. I uh, hope I didn't go over time, uh, Mr. Uh, Ohisam uh, Bujam. Um, thank you very much. Uh, no, thank you, thank you, my brother. Uh, no, I uh, know it was quite a, a detailed and an interesting presentation. Uh, giving us uh, an insight as far as uh, strategies or uh, ways that one can explore if uh, as an entrepreneur if he wishes to uh, to expand your business ladies and gentlemen uh, we have uh, the both speakers have rendered their presentation uh, now we will now go to a q a session where we uh, our audience are now allowed to to share uh, their thoughts or uh, share their questions uh, from uh, as far as the presentations are concerned. So while we are waiting for uh, for our audience uh, to, to join uh, for, for questions, yes, uh, let me start with Me Musito. Me Musito, uh, I have known you as someone who has been in a very challenging environment uh, uh, in a mining sector. Uh, where it's a, where a male dominated field and then mostly as a black woman. Uh, how, how has the importance of mentorship which goes uh, hand in hand with, uh, uh, goes hand in hand with a, a business coach, how has it assisted to you to, 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 to grow your business the way it is today? Thank you. Thank you. For me, uh, I've, I've benefited a lot, you know, by having a mentor in my business. I would mention at least seven benefits uh, is that uh, having a mentor provides you with more knowledge and it helps you to improve, you know, your business, your business plan, as well as, you know, broaden your professional network, you know, a mentor always encourages you. Every time I want to give up, then the mentor will encourage me to move forward, find new ways of doing things, especially even now during COVID. I, I find a lot of entrepreneurs wanting to give up instead of looking for a mentor who can help them to at least come up with innovative ideas of running their business further. So I get a free advice from, from a mentor and a mentor always shares an experience with you. So we learn from their past mistakes. Like myself, I enjoy sharing, you know, my past mistakes so that people can learn from them because as an entrepreneur, 
I've, you know, I've been through a lot of challenges and I made a lot of mistakes. You know, I lost a lot of money trying to establish businesses which I didn't have enough knowledge about. But I believe if I had, you know, made proper research and found a mentor in the different fields that I wanted to do, I would have really succeeded in some of those businesses. But at the moment, I do have a great mentor who asked me to focus on really my passion, which is, you know, engineering, steel fabrication, because it's what I've really been doing for the past 19 years. So really a mentor puts you back in lane when you find yourself, you know, difficult to maneuver. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Dingy, <clears throat> I think maybe Mr. Lwena, you'll come at a later stage, maybe to, 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 to uh, attempt in answering this question. Uh, Mr. Dingy, uh, from, uh, as a lecturer in entrepreneurship, maybe this you have uh, been asked this question a couple of times. Uh, how do you get a mentor? How do you get a business coach? I, 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 use, I insist on using the bis, a mentor because business coach it's somewhere it would uh, one would consider it as where you, you need to purchase a this uh, maybe an advisory services but if we direct it more from a, a business mentorship perspective therefore it's done that way create a not there to say one then can be busy easily reach out to someone to say can you guide me into this piece so but the, the essence of the, uh, the this discussion how do you secure a business mentor because most of the people, that is a very a struggle that uh, young entrepreneurship, uh, Black in particular, are struggling with. Thank you. All right. Um, it's a difficult question, but it's an easy question at the same time. All right. Um, that's why I was talking about these issues such as your, you know, developing competences and knowing yourself. Because most people, what I've seen, they always want mentors without understanding exactly what they want. I mean, you can hear from the story of Ostebov. You know, she was committed and she knew exactly what is it that she wanted. And normally what happens, I also believe this is not a spiritual cause, but normally if you are committed and starting that journey to be to follow whatever that you want to, to do, then you normally, um, they, they always say that um, um, a teacher will appear when a student is ready, meaning that uh, normally your, your, your mentors will find you. Right, but sometimes, yes, some people prefer that approach of formalizing it and making sure that you network as much as possible until you find somebody that you, you can relate to, all right? Because remember, a mentor is not somebody that's gonna be there to, to assist you to do things that you can do. It's somebody who's supposed to be there to assist you where you cannot assist yourself. Uh, so the first of the thing that I always advise my students is you need to understand what is it that you want. And it also starts, goes deeper to finding what is it, what's your purpose? I mean, Max Moyer is one of the guys that I, I collaborate with, who always talking about this thing of ID, finding identity, because if you know who you are, then you know what is it that you want. And normally people who are aligned to what you want, normally they'll actually find you, right? which is um, uh, that issue of trusting. But of course, the other way is just to network as much as possible, go to as many, as many meetings as you can, uh, especially on whatever you're interested in until you find somebody that you can speak to. Or you can also formally ask somebody to be a mentor, right? And sometimes people will say yes, even if they want, they want, they, uh, they, 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 they not really want to support you. And then you'll find out later when you try to call them that they're not available, right? Because sometimes they, they can sense that, um, you know what, professionally I can't say no, but I can see this person is not ready. So that's just my two cents on that issue. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, sir. Yes, I see the hand from Mr. Uh, Mohali. Uh, you can come in, sir, with your question. Please unmute and, and pose it, uh, share your question with us, thank you. Okay, sorry, can you hear me now? Yes, can you hear you. Okay, yes, technology challenges, yeah. Um, so my question will be to Mr. Dingy again. Um, you, you, you're mentioning something very important about the mentors. Now, you found that young people who start business, they don't think about going to find the mentors. 
So my question is like, how can, can the mentor or can somebody go and try to mentor a person if they're not requesting a mentor? Why I'm asking that question, it's, it's because most of the other people, they will be scared to go to a business person. One of the speaker did mention to say, even if let's say you find people failing, you must take their failures as part of learning. But some other people, they don't wanna share. And if let's say I'm starting a business and I know Mr. A was running, let's say for an example, taxi industry, and then I know he failed, he probably not gonna mentor me, but how do, how do you get, get it right? If let's say I'm a new beginner, I don't know anything about the mentoring or the coaching. How do I start my own network to be able to, to succeed in the network environment? Thank you, my All brother. Right. Mr. Mr. Thank, you. thank you for that. Yeah, thank you for that wonderful question. It's something that I also love to discuss with, with different people. Um, to start with, you must understand that people have, we all have pride, we call it ego, all right, which is what most people struggle with. Um, because if even you can, sometimes you, you get somebody who's hungry, if you give them food, they'll ask you, who said I need that, all right? But of course you give people um, uh, to help people because you can see that they need help. So as individuals, we're different. We, we treat these things differently. So if somebody has failed in the past, Yes, some people will be willing to share, but the reality of the situation is some people also take it personally, right? And that's one of the things that also are blocking um, uh, the development of entrepreneurship uh, because people, when they see failure, uh, people that fail, how society actually views you because they still view you as a failure, right? So um, to start with, you always have to think that that is the reality of the situation. So when you go and ask people for assistance, you always have to remember that they also have their own issues. Right, and you're doing it because you're asking for help. And when you ask for help, people can say no. Most of the time we think if we ask for help, the people are supposed to help us. And if they say no, in most, most cases, most of us will judge people, all right? Instead of recognizing that it's, it's me who cannot actually handle um, the rejection, which is something that's very important, especially for entrepreneurship, because as an entrepreneur, rejection is part of you. It's something that you do. I mean, um, you read books like Rich Dad Poor Dad, the, the, the guy he tells you that, um, he worked for Zero for Zero for a long time. Uh, he had a, a mentor, the, the rich dad, right? But when he got too big for his own shoes, then the, the, the mentor is the guy who actually will tell him off that you're doing something that's wrong. But basically what I'm getting at is he actually had to learn from failure. Uh, that's why he took a, a job and he recommend taking jobs such as a call center so that you can handle the failure. So it's your journey. It's your journey and if you believe on it, of course, you're gonna uh, uh, reach a lot of uh, 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 thorns on your path. Let me put it that way, All right? So how you handle those paths will actually determine if you go forward. So when you're starting from scratch, you always have to remember, it's your business. It's nobody else's business. You go out there to ask for help, to support you on something that you might be lacking or your own blind spots. But it's your business. It is not nobody else's business. But immediately when you start, and now you put in your, your, your I want the, the right word for this, you put in your, uh, your future in somebody else's hand, then you're not truly an entrepreneur because now you are externally driven because there's this thing we call intrinsic and extrinsic uh, type of motivation. Entrepreneurs, they have intrinsic. They manage themselves. If there's failure, they know what to do. They have their own prayers, how they handle all these rejections. But people who don't show the traits of being entrepreneurs are the guys who, if they're doing something, you always want external validation. And if you always want external validation, I guarantee you, you're gonna be disappointed because you're gonna always go with the wind. So if you want a mentor and you, if you're committed to something, it's your responsibility. You can call me, you can make, I can, you can be, for example, I can mentor you if you say you want me to mentor you. But one day when you call me asking for a meeting, I might have challenges in my own marriage. I might have challenges at work. I might be tired. There may be many things. And of course, if you committed, then you're gonna follow up and try to understand what could be the issue. And if you feel it, you see that it's not working as an entrepreneur, then you change your approach. That means you need to ask somebody else. Don't take it personal because immediately you start judging this person and saying, no, this, he, he failed, why can't he answer my question? Then it's not about them, it's not about you, how you process things. So it's your journey, just continue. And I guarantee you, and I've, I've seen in my own life also that a lot of things, if you're committed to the, to the path, like I said again, the teacher will appear 
the right time. Thank you. I hope I've answered you. All right. Yes, you Thank have you. answered me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And uh, so, uh, the second question, uh, I hope you have seen, but Ms. Musito, just one in five engineers are women. The field that is not typically uh, typical choice for women. How did you find uh, your bearing in this, in the field to extend extent of establishing your own business? And then also, in addition to that, Ms. Musito, perhaps you can also enlighten us for it. How how was it as an entrepreneur, as a person who has walked the journey? How has the journey been in trying to find different mentorship and mentors to, 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 that has assisted you in growing your business? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah. The question is, yeah, it's a very tough one. I, I just, I don't know how every day, you know, I look back and, you know, I, I think for me, perseverance pays because I remember when I started this business in engineering, I went to knock into a lot of doors and people will just, you know, send me from pillar to post asking me why I want to venture into engineering. So I needed to be tough and explain that, you know, women can also perform in these industries and they can also, you know, be successful in, in, in the industry. But it, it was difficult. I think the easiest part for me was that uh, I previously worked with, my ex-husband was a welder. So I learned a lot about, you know, steel engineering, you know, from a very young age. And yeah, I became passionate about the industry. And when you have that passion, it drives you, even though every day you face a lot of challenge because you are passionate about it, you don't give up. For me, how did I find a right mentor? I joined a number of industry associations related to engineering and you know, mining, networking in business events. And with my LinkedIn profile, I always ask, relevant questions and sometimes the mentors just come and offer their you know their service to me to say we would like to help you achieve because we can see that you are not giving up in the industry i didn't get your other question yes how did you secure your first mentor but i think you have covered it uh, in the sense that you uh, the platforms that you have uh, uh, participated in that and created opportunities for you to get a uh, business mentors? Yeah, we, with the first business that I started, uh, I was struggling a lot. I remember, you know, one of these big mining companies in Rustenburg, you know, they were my client and they could see that, you know, I was having challenges and they put me on an enterprise development program where now I was matched with a mentor who understood the industry and they took me from, you know, each and every step that I needed to take. But uh, yeah, they were very helpful. And I think that is where we can start as, as startup entrepreneurs to, to be on enterprise development programs or supply development programs where you find mentors who are willing to, to show you and guide you on how to grow within the field that you want to be in. And also being part of the International Women in Mining, there's quite a lot of forums and information that they share and they link us with various mentors, you know, in different fields. You know, some of these mentors are women. Sometimes they're not even in engineering, but because they've ran their own difficult businesses, then they are able to assist you on how to remain focused and not give up on, you know, on the goal of being successful. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you, you Ma'am Sito. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the, the, the webinar was budgeted for an hour. Uh, it's now seven o'clock in the evening. I will, in the absence of any, uh, Question. I will then request our 
provincial chairperson uh, to come in, share her thoughts, and then also uh, before we uh, take, have our last bite from our speakers as present remarks. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity, Robo Jang. Um, it gives me such pleasure to be in the company of the two speakers. Um, there's always something to learn, especially more reading thing. He gives the academic and the theoretical background, and Metewoko she always brings um life into whatever is happening. So. Um, thank you for, for, for the speakers, especially the part where Re Masakala spoke of um, the five key principles of infatuation. I think a lot of people, we register businesses, but it's, we, we, we shelf them for another three, four years because we're waiting for something to happen. And I guess it's part of being infatuated with the idea of being a business person. So. This this webinar, I think it has brought a lot, a um, lot of meat to ideas. I'm sure after this webinar, a lot of people will find a way to say, how do I action my 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 ideas? Um, and it will also brighten up um, the ideas how to move from ideation to an actual concept. Because Reading touched on those. I wish we had you know more time. But I think this should be the start of many to come. And I hope it will be the start of many to come in the future. And that will benefit the people in our province. Besides the people in our province, the ones that will benefit other people countrywide. And hopefully with time, we'll partner with other funding institutions so that whatever we talk about, there's also ways of saying, how do we action it? With those few words, um, I'm happy with with the ideas, the 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 presentation given, and for me, it gives me great pleasure to be associated with them. And I hope it has benefited everybody who has joined in in this call to actually say, how do we, I move from an idea to an actual concept? On those that have a concept and have registered how to move from a concept to actually, you know, going from just an imaging business to now a proper SMME and a bigger commercial business. Um, with those few words, I thank you, Re Rebo Jang, and I think um, I'll take it back to you to, to conclude. Okay, thank you, uh, Provincial Chair. Uh, 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 we are now nearing our, uh, the end of our session. Uh, uh, word of advice. Uh, uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay, my advice to entrepreneurs or anyone who wants to start their own business. Uh, I, I know some of them, they always say they, they can't get funding and then they wait for funding before they start. If you have an idea and you have a passion and you understand the industry that you want to, to play a role in, you don't need to wait for funding, just start something. Because if you don't start, you know, somebody out there can start, you know, Myself, Johnny, you know my journey. I started with a zero balance, but today, you know, my company is growing and growing, you know, in the midst of the pandemic, we are still growing. So yeah, if I didn't, you know, start, you know, I think I would still be waiting for funding. So I, I encourage everyone to start, start something today. Get a mentor, you know, if you don't understand, you know, ask questions and you will get help. Thank you. For your time and then for also sharing your journey and your experiences with us and indeed the everyone needs to get started if you if you wishes to start your own business. Uh, Mr. Dingi, your parting shots. 
Um, just want to say thank you guys for attending. Um, you are supposed to be here. Uh, the people who are supposed to be here are not here. Um, just shows you that you uh, are starting this whole chain. Um, as far as entrepreneurship is concerned, just do it. Always remember it's about an opportunity and an opportunity as a window. Right, it has a window that you need to, to take advantage of. And it takes a different type of thinking to, to do that. And how do you do that? Like all the speakers have been saying, you must network. But personal development is very important to know yourself. It's very important. I mean, even myself, I'm still learning. I'm part of Toastmasters in Rustenburg. Just learn how to talk and how to speak. So it's about a journey. And don't give up. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir for your informative uh, presentation and the thoughts that you have shared with us. Ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to the end of our session. Thank you, everyone that you have taken time to join and listen to us and also for your interaction. Uh, join us, Likamosu. Thank you. <laughs>